Amen. Students of the word, make some noise. Glory, glory, glory. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I thank God also for those that's tuning in by way of Facebook, YouTube. We thank God for our online audience, um, our friends and family from all around. Those that have been supporting us and helping us do what we do right here in Duval County, we thank God for you. Well, it is that time for us to jump into uh, tonight's session, our Student of the Word Interactive Bible Study. But before we do, I uh, have a few housekeeping items. First and foremost, uh, if you can pull out your cell phones, your iPhone, your Android devices, uh, and uh, help us to get the gospel out simply by sharing uh, the live feed to your timeline. We're live. We're Krispy Kreme hot. And we would love if you can help us to get the gospel of Jesus Christ out. Also, we thank God for those that are viewing. We thank God for Tori. We, we see Angela, uh, you're online, uh, and some of the others. We thank God for you. But if you could just be so kind, just to share it to your timeline, uh, because you never know who may need to hear a word from the Lord. We would greatly appreciate it. Also, for those that uh, would like to connect with us further, you can do that by way of Instagram. Where you can follow us at the Forward CC on the Gram. And for those that prefer uh, YouTube over Facebook and Instagram, you can uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Simply go to YouTube, type in Forward Christian Center, hit the subscribe button and the bell, and anytime we go live, you'll go live right along with us. Also, we're going to pause for what I call our media moment, so if you can pull out your cell phones, uh, and we're going to take our selfies or us is It's church check-in time. Yeah, church check-in time, so pull out your cell phones. Yeah, take your best picture and drop it on social media. You can check in right here at the Forward Christian Center. And we're going to rewind uh, this past Sunday's message. My relationship matters. My relationship matters. So go ahead and check in to the Forward Christian Center under uh, hashtag it, My Relationship Matters. And... Um, and we're going to jump into tonight's session. Also, anybody here for the first time? Any first timers in the building tonight? No first timers. Any second timers? Any second? Oh no! Oh, yeah, that's your baby first time. Welcome. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Welcome to the Forward Christian Center. We had a pizza yeah, party just yeah, for you. Yeah. <laughs> second timers. Any second timers in the building? Second timers. All right, over here. Let's bless God. Welcome. Amen. Welcome again. Any third timers? Any third timers? All right, no third timers. All right. Well, we thank God for those that have joined us tonight here at the Forward Christian Center. I pray tonight's session is going to be a blessing. We're going to delve a little deeper into um, my relationships matter uh, message that was uh, delivered this past Sunday, uh, so we can just get a greater ins uh, insight, uh, di um, a different perspective. Uh, as it relates to our relationships mattering. Also, uh, tomorrow, any fellas in the house, make some noise. Amen. Man Cave tomorrow, 6.30. I look forward to seeing you in the building, Man Cave. Tomorrow, 6.30, bring a friend, uh, bring your homie, your brother, whomever. Uh, we would love to see you in the building. Uh, man Cave is good because it gives us an opportunity to talk about things that relates to a man. And and we can receive encouragement, insight from some other brothers so that you can see that you're not the only one going through what you're going through. Amen. Amen. All right. Also, uh, anything else coming up? Uh, um, we have our ladies uh, on the move at the end, well, the first of next month. So if you have not registered, can I encourage you to go ahead and register to join us for our Sister Sanctuary road trip. Y'all got a road trip? All right. Yeah, we road tripping. Uh, did, did you ask me? I ain't, my dad I ain't signed no release for him. my dad name? No. <laughs> I ain't signed no release for him. I thought, I thought uh, my dad name was Larry. Yeah, but, yeah, okay, but you ain't married to your daddy no more. Today. <laughs> I, ain't, I ain't give you authorization yet. Ladies, we getting on the road. Y'all ready to get on the road? <laughs> Anybody joining us? Anybody coming? Y'all coming? What y'all going to do? We going to St. Simon's Island. We're going to just have a day trip. Mm -hmm. Just enjoy each other, fellowship. 
Uh, we're going to get some golf carts. We're going to ride the island. We're going to just enjoy some lunch. We're going to have a uh, sister scavenger hunt. Uh, just some fun things and okay. just some time so we can fellowship together. So I pray that you all are able to join us. We're going to have some fun. We're going to kick back, enjoy the, the breeze out there on St. Simon Island because I think it's going to be a good time. So I hope y'all are pressed and come on. Uh, the golf carts are $25 each person because we're going to team up and rent them and we're going to just ride and have us some fun. And then, of course, your lunch, whatever you buy for your lunch is on you. But we just want to have a good time. So I encourage you all to sign up. You and can go on our website. Yeah, yeah sign on up. Uh, go on the web page. It's out there, uh, forwardcc.org. Click on the events tab and you will see it. Uh, bring a friend. Uh, matter of fact, if you have a daughter that's 13 and up, bring her. And we're just going to have some fun. Amen. Amen. And also uh, on November 2nd, uh, we're going to have our first ever marriage conference here at the Forward Christian Center. Yeah. Amen. And it's going to be an awesome, uh, impactful, and, and insightful um, marriage conference. As a matter of fact, we had a bunch of people sign up, y'all. Already, yeah. yeah. It's a bunch of folks. Yeah, uh, cool. And I, I like it because it's a bunch of new folk, uh, people mm -hmm. that we haven't even, you know, met. Um, and that's how it is normally uh, when we uh, throw it out there. Yeah. Um, it's people that come in from all around. So uh, we're looking forward to our marriage conference. Also, musicians, we're going to need y'all. I'm going to go ahead giving y'all a heads up. We need y'all uh, uh, November 2nd and 3rd. Um, but the workshops will be, or the, excuse me, the conference will be the 2nd, 3rd, and 4th. Uh, second and third will be nightly sessions, and then uh, the fourth, that Saturday, we're going to have breakout sessions and workshops, and then we're going to wrap it up at noon. So it's going to be something that you don't want to miss. If you have some people that need to brush up on some things in marriage, or you even simply want to maintenance their marriage, uh, it's going to be for them. Singles, you guys are welcome as well. Uh, you'll be able to peep in to see what we talk about on the marriage side, amen. So. So it's going to be something that's going to be great. I'm looking forward to it. And I do know that many people's lives and marriages will be changed yes. and blessed because of Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Amen. Praise God All for right. that. Excited. Uh, so tonight again, we're going to be in our uh, relationship, uh, our ship series. Uh, we're going to do a Sunday Rewind. Y'all ready to do a Rewind? Yes, Rewind. Rewind, Selecta. <laughs> Back to my cool running days, yeah. yeah. So um, we're going to rewind um, this past Sunday's message, and we're going to begin by going to the book of Acts, chapter 13. We're going to read verses 2 through 5. Uh, that's Acts 13, 2 through 5. Uh, we're doing a rewind on this past Sunday's message. I can't wait to put my little two cents in. Add my little quarter. You got to drop your quarter Put my little two cents in the mix. Uh, so go to book of Acts 13, 2 through 5, and it reads as this. One day as the me these men were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Appoint Barnabas and Paul for the special work to which I have called them. So after more fasting and prayer, the men laid their hands on them and sent them on their way. So Barnabas and Paul were sent out by the Holy Spirit. They went down to the seaport of Seleucia and then sailed from the island of Cyprus. There in the town of Salamis, they went to Jewish synagogue and preached the word of God. And John Mark went with them as their assistant. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, we love you. We thank you. We thank you for your word, which is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathways. Again, Father, we thank you for your word because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And finally, we thank you for your word because man or one man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So it is by your word that gives light to our daily steps. It is by your word that gives our faith the strength that it needs. And it is by your word that gives us the ability to have life and that more abundantly. So, Father God, let your word accomplish that which it was sent to do. We step aside that you may step forward. Help us to preach and teach with simplicity, clarity, and accuracy. None of us and all of you. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. And the church said. Amen. And amen. 
my relationships matter. Yes, Lord. Here in the book of Acts, we can see where uh, the Apostle Paul and Barnabas and some um, believers of the gospel were worshiping the Lord. The scripture says that they were worshiping the Lord and fasting. And Holy Spirit spoke to them to both anoint and appoint Barnabas and Paul for the special work of the ministry. I love this uh, passage because it lets us know, simply put, that um, when Holy Spirit gets ready to endorse the work that's within us, uh, he can do that by the laying on of hands by believers that we are in community with. And also we can see in scripture where uh, when God has commissioned you uh, to go out and to do his work, um, you will also have some other people that will support you in what you're doing. I know a lot of times as believers, we'll see people go out by themselves and they'll um, have rogue assignments. They don't have any support. They don't have any covering. They don't have any fellowship. Um, they're just running with what they feel like God is saying. But one of the things I want to pull out is that anytime God pushes you forward, he's going to give you the support that you need to do the work that you're doing. Why? Because God knows how to pay for what he orders. In the scripture, we can clearly see it where Holy Spirit said, appoint unto me Barnabas and Saul for the special work of the ministry. And and he Holy Spirit, he sent them out to do the work of the Lord. And when I saw this, it began to remind me of how important it is for us to have bona fide relationships in our life that's going to push us forward to do what God has called us to do. Amen. Amen. Come on. Bless God for that. Yeah. Bona fide relationships. I like the point of the relationship because relationships are important. I think that. um Probably the top things that cause us to go on emotional roller coasters, coasters in our hearts and lives is our relationships. Mm -hmm. um, those relationships we have with our coworkers, our friends, our husbands and wives. There's no other thing that brings people to the altar more than relationships. That's real. Relationships, money, health. Those are the top three things that the that the bo uh, that bothers the believers. That those things are our struggles. Those things are our testing. Uh, and when we're talking about relationships, those are the things that keep us on our knees. We're praying for those loved ones. We're praying for that husband. We're yeah. praying for those children. We're praying for that mother. We're praying for that friend. Relationships are important. That's why it's important to be able to master your relationships. When your relationships are mastered, you can move forward in life and not just move forward, but move forward with joy. You can move forward without residue. You can move forward with peace. Yeah, you yeah, can yeah. move forward without all kind of issues, tests and trials, because you know that God's hand is on your life and he's already ordained all of your relationships. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's give God some praise. Yeah, yeah. And, and this is good because, simply put, if you want to live a peaceful life, um, these are two decisions that you must make sure you get right. Number one, receiving Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. When you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're going to have some peace. The second most important decision would be either who you marry or who you're in relationships with. Mm -hmm. Who you marry, uh, truth be told, uh, can bring peace uh, in your life. But also who you marry, it can also bring chaos and destruction as well. So we have to be careful, you know, um, as it relates to marriage and even relationships that we have. Because some of us, we have, some of you all are singles in here. And I just want y'all to understand the importance of um, navigating the relationships that you're in. Because those relationships can either push you forward to do the will of God or they can become a stumbling block in your life. So we can clearly see in scripture where anytime we want to have a relationship with anybody, it should be influenced by the Holy Spirit. Think about it. If we're believers, we should live like believers should live. 
And clearly in scripture, we can see where Holy Spirit says, separate unto me, Paul and Barnabas, King James Version, for the work of the Lord. Yeah. And likewise, we have to understand that we're not just put here by accident. Yeah. No, God has an assignment. He has a plan. He has a purpose on our life yeah. to do the work they just call us to do. And in order to do that special work, we got to make sure that we got some holy hookups in our life. Yeah. I'm talking about people that are holy, people that are saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. People that know how to pray, people that know how to fast, people know how to intercede for you when you need some help. So clearly in scripture, we can see that um, all of our relationships should have a divine assignment connected with it. In other words, if you're not divinely assigned to my life, I may need to start cutting you out of my life. Come on, let's praise God for that divine assignment. When I think about a divine assignment, I think about something that God has put into place. And you'll know when God puts things in place in our life because peace will follow it. It'll also come with progression. Mm -hmm. uh, peace, progression, favor. Uh, you'll also have um, like-mindedness. That's good. There's also going to be a, um, a desire to do more. Because anybody that we connect with in our life will cause us to want to be better. It's just a part of that. If they're assigned and divinely assigned, you'll start progressing because your life will increase because you're connected the right way. Uh, there are some times where you'll see people in relationships in times past. Maybe they had one husband and they, you see them and they all messed up. Next thing you know, they decide to say, you know what, I'm going to break away from this relationship. Follow God. Then they get with the next husband and they just thriving. Yeah, and you look just good. Start, start glow, looking good. Yeah, they got a glow all of a sudden. Holy Ghost yeah. glow. They praising the Lord on purpose. They doing what they're need, needing to do in God because of the divine connection. Amen. Come on, let's give God some praise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that leads us to our first interactive question. Jump on in. What boundaries do you have in place to make sure your relation ships are divine connection what boundaries do you have in place to make sure your relationships are divinely connected um, when I begin to think about um, the relationships that I have in my life I try to of course make sure that they're saved and also make sure that they not only love God but also make sure that they love us yeah, yeah, that, 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 that's my requirement. I don't want you to just love God because just by you loving God doesn't mean you will always have our best interests at heart. But when you love us, uh, you, you find some people that just love you for you. They love you, um, and you can be, be uh, transparent with them. You can be before them naked. In other words, you don't have to cross every T and dot every I. You, 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 you found some people that really genuine love you. And I just want to encourage those that are here tonight to just find some people that genuinely love you. Yeah. Where you can let your hair down mm -hmm. and feel okay. Yeah. Where when they see you make a mistake, you, you, you know they're not going to put your business in the street. Yes. And they ain't going to talk yeah. about you like a dog. I, I'm give, giving y'all some giving y'all some keys, yeah. and, and and these are some things you know that I have put in place to where um, before I let you get real close to me, I gotta make sure you love me for real. Yeah, yeah, yeah I got, and I can I can tell by the way you treat me. Yeah. I can tell by the way you uh, you serve me. Yeah. I I can tell you know certain things by by how you look and think all all that matters. Yeah. So so I just want to encourage some of you all to. Put those boundaries in yeah. place because those boundaries will keep the enemy out yeah. and keep the ones that's supposed to be in, in, mm, and it'll yeah. give you some peace in your life. That's good. Come on, praise God for that. They love you. I like that because love has a look and also love gives. Uh, when there are people or people that want to be connected to our lives, we got to make sure they're giving into our lives. Not, it's not about finance. 
but it's about a love giving. It's an exchange. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a giving of support. There is a giving of prayer. There is a giving of encouragement. There is a giving of just all just all around love because yes, yes. when we're in relationship with people, the way that we can kind of put some parameters are those that don't give you nothing. You can't be connected with me. I, if all of my love is pouring on you, but I'm not getting anything back in exchange, that's an unbalanced relationship. I'm going to be bankrupt and you're going to be full and loving. And I'm going to be sitting there looking like, oh, I'm so tired. You woe out. You intercessing all day for them. And they just like, please pray for me. Please pray for me. Please pray for me. Please help me. Please give me. Please do it. Please, 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 please. And you giving all that. But when it's time for you, they know where to be found. <laughs> Paint rope. Yeah. No money on my card. <laughs> <laughs> they taking all of you. Yeah. Go ahead. When I read the question, immediately I thought about the scripture, Galatians 5, mm. 22. Um, so the boundaries I have set is I'm a fruit inspector. Mm. Yeah. So I inspect to see if they have love, as you yeah. said, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Yeah. If they don't have those, they don't possess those fruit, can't be a part of my relationship. Amen, 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 amen. amen. Yeah. And, and, and that's so key uh, because God has called all of us to be fruit inspectors. Yes. Uh, we fruit loops around here. We, 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 we go to, you know, the farmer's market. Um, I don't know about y'all, but I grew up over there off of um, Russian and, um, and Tyler Street. And, and one of the things we used to do is we used to go to the farmer's market and we used to go and we used to go and um, pick up fruit. Uh, but but one of the things you want to do is while you're out picking up fruit, you want to get those fruit that are sweet yeah yeah you won't you, you don't want no no just regular kind of fruit no i want some juicy fruit yeah i want some love that's splashing yeah. some love that's gonna ooze you know and, and likewise we got to find some believers that got some juicy fruit yeah. i'm talking about some fruit that's gonna cause you to want to come back and eat from their life yeah. yeah but sometimes man we run across believers their fruit is 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 uh what what dry yeah it's uh it's not ripe uh so, yeah you bite into it it's sour you know it, it it causes you to cringe but as a believer our fruit should be sweet so people can always eat from our life and want to come back amen. amen that's good all right so i think uh when sister terry hit it on the head um i definitely want to before i i can I associate with a lot of people, but I only connect with a few. Yes. Um, so, like, what's going on in your life? Mm -hmm. um, you only got two. That job had me messed up before I leave you on red. Because, <laughs> bro, my uncle used to tell us, if you look around the room and everybody messed up but you, it's probably you. Mm. So, if, if, if you're one of them people that just, it's always somebody. Oh. It's always mm -hmm. something. Bro, take, take, take that on. I, I can't do it. But yeah. that's the biggest thing. And if it's always give me it ain't transactional then you you elite you don't mm -hmm. benefit me none and obviously i'm benefiting you too much so gotta cut yeah. you yeah yeah That's amen good. amen amen yeah. amen and, and then i want to i did want to pick it back on what he said uh we should be friendly to all associates to some but friends to few we can be friendly to everybody friendliness is something that we should give but when we're talking about intimate friendship, we got to be real picky. Let's be as picky about who we allow as our friends as we are with our food. Because some of us, I don't eat that. I don't eat over there. I don't eat this. I don't eat that. But we'll, uh, we'll uh, let, let everybody else in our lives, anybody who roll up on us and say, oh, I want to be your friend. We like, oh, come on in. And then get mad. That's like inviting the devil to dinner and get mad when he eat all the food. <laughs> you invited him. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Get mad at the friends because they turn out to be who you should have inspected in the beginning them to be. Discernment is key in all of our relationships. Amen. That's good. Come on. Let's give God some praise. Yeah. Yeah. I want to say, well, I will say it because devils going to be devils. Yeah. Yeah. Devils going to be devils. De uh, devils come uh, to kill, steal, and destroy. But the devil, he's not going to show up himself no he shows up in the life of other people yeah. 
And when people come into your life and they start killing what's in your life, mm. stealing what's in your life, mm. uh, it, 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 it's, it's, it's showing that you attracted the wrong thing. Mm. And, and some of us, we just got to uh, get to a place to where we say, uh-uh, uh-uh, devil, I see what you're doing. Yeah. You're taking more from me. Yeah. And, and, and when you start seeing your life uh, go topsy-turvy, mm -hmm. Or you start seeing unbalanced things happen in your life, and you start noticing inconsistency in your spirituality, um, and, and you know it, it's some wrong pieces. But that's when we have to have the ability and the confidence to start recalibrating our relationships. And, and we have to recalibrate them because just because a person is good for you in this season doesn't mean they're going to be good for your life in the next season. They may have spoiled. They may have expired. Yeah. But you got to be willing to reevaluate your friendships yeah. and put people in the places that yeah. they should be. Yeah, and I do want to add, don't be afraid to move the pieces around. Because in some seasons, you may have people that are closer to you than they were in other seasons. Sometimes some people got to be pushed back to that second level and not that intimate level, depending on what's going on in their lives. Sometimes people are going through traumas and troubles and heartache and heartbreak, and they can't be in your most intimate circle because they're broken at that time. And broken things are going to do broken things. So you can't allow them to have, or broken people are going to do broken things. So you'll have them there, and you there are sometimes you got to, you know, shift them back a little bit. You know, they can't handle the weight of all of who you are in this season. There's that season for them is like, okay, I'm going to have to put you on level stage, you know, you know, my circle ring. You got the intimate, you got the outer, inner court, and then you got the outer court. I might have to put you back to the outer court. It's okay. We're still good friends, but you may not be able to handle me in this season. That's good. Come on, let's give God some praise. <laughs> Amen. Okay. So the boundaries I've I've learned to place in my relationships. Um, and I, it's so crazy. I love that. I was just talking to this. I was just talking to my mom about this before I left the house. Before y'all text me, I was, I was just talking to her about this. But I had to um, make sure that in my relationships, they put God at the head of their life. Yeah. Because when people do not put like God at the head of their life, when you're going through something, they're not going to recommend God to you. They're not mm -hmm. going to pray for you. They're yeah. not going to lead you back to him. Yeah. They're going to lead you to something else. Yeah. And when I put God at the head of my life and I started hearing people in, people in my relationships, they're going through stuff and they're just like, oh, well, then maybe I need to turn to sex and maybe I need to go to another person. I'm like, ooh. Maybe I'm not supposed to be in connection with you <laughs> at all. No, because I That's need real. to know. I, yeah. need, I love him. I know he has everything I mm -hmm. need. So I need you to know this as well. Mm -hmm. And I can't make people. I can, I, can, I can demonstrate. I can do all I can, but I can't give you my faith. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that means that I'm going to have to leave you in the outer court. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to turn my back and move some. I have to be near him. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So, yes. Amen. That's, That's good. good. That's good. They yeah, be that's close good. To God. And, and what she said was so key because it's good. To, it, it's good to have believers in your life because when you do hit those spells of dryness mm -hmm. or those uh, spells where you're not able to hear God like you used to, yeah. you have to have believers that's going to push you toward the things of God mm -hmm. versus the things of the world. Yeah. And 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 here here I just want to paint this picture because. If you have someone in your life that's a believer, when you run through those um, those spells, they're gonna say, "Hold on, hold on, let's 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 get back into our word. Let's do it together, or uh, let's let's begin to um, uh, fast and let's begin to pray and get down on our knees and seek God during yeah. this time." Yeah. But when you have someone worldly in your life, mm. what they gonna do? Oh, let's go to the club. You, uh, need to, uh, you need to blow off some steam. Yeah, you need to blow off some steam. <laughs> you need to, we, we gonna get drunk tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And they start start pushing you toward devices yeah. versus having a connection with God. Yeah. And those devices gonna keep you in a place yeah. of wanting. Yeah. Cause alcohol will never satisfy. Mm -hmm. 
Sex will never satisfy. Drugs will never satisfy. Those things of the world will never satisfy. All it's going to do is keep you thirsty. Yeah. It's going to keep you thirsty. Yeah. And the more you drink, yeah. the worse you'll get. Yeah. But when you got somebody that says, hey, get down on your knees. Mm -hmm. Humble yourself. Yeah. Open up your ears. Yeah. Get in your word. Yeah. He'll begin to push you toward the things of God. And your breakthrough will come. Yeah. Simply by you having the right relationships in your life. Mm, that's good. The right relationships will cause things to begin to shift. It'll cause you to get out of a, a backslidden situation. I remember as a young woman of God, mm -hmm. I had those right connections. I had people in my life who would check on me when I was going through certain things that would make sure I made it to church, that would call me when I was going through, that would be there on the phone. I had my godmother would call and just early in the morning, 5 o'clock, wake up, it's time to pray. I'm like, <laughs> I have it, I roll like, oh, my God, here she go again. But those pushes I needed in my life, those standards that they, the women of God would have me to say, you know, you need to be doing this, that, and the third. I needed those things. Those, those were the right relationships that I needed at the time. I might have not understood why, you know, I had those kinds of relationships. I felt like all of my friends was old. I was like, I ain't got no friends. All these old women, the elders and the mothers. Like, the <laughs> I want some, yeah, I want some friends. I want to be able to do stuff. <laughs> I got the mothers. <laughs> But God knew the right relationships yeah, and the connections that mothers. I needed. Yeah. I needed those mothers. I was looking back <laughs> at my wedding video. I was like, well, I got all these old folks in here walking down the aisle. <laughs> <laughs> at my wedding. I had my sisters, of course. But then I looked back, I seen a couple of mothers. I'm like, wait a minute. That, that don't even look right. But those were the relationships that I needed. Those were the ones that kept me in the face of God. They caused me to say, you know what? I need to change. I need to grow. I need to reevaluate some of the things that I was doing. Amen. Amen. Come on. Let's give God some praise. Yeah. 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 So our relationship should be ordered by the Lord. We could clearly see it in Acts 13 and 2. One day as these men were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, appoint Barnabas and Saul for the special work that I have called them. So we can clearly see that relationships are ordered by the Lord. Yeah. Um, it happens when God uh, divinely appoints them. And if God is so intentional about the relationship between pa Barnabas and Paul, I believe we as believers should be intentional about our relationships with other people. So let's begin to define relationship. I believe the power to define gives us the ability to fulfill. Relationship is defined as a connection. So anytime someone says, I'm in a relationship with you, that means there's some form of connection. Uh, also, association. When the, someone says, I have a relationship with you, that means uh, you're an associate. Um, but also, it goes a step further to say that your relationship is also, also means that you're involved with them. Um, not involved, but involved. It means um, they have a part of you and you have a part of them. You're intertwined. You're commingling. Mm -hmm. uh, you're hooked together, yeah. and and this is where we have to really be careful because um, many of us we have some relationships in our life that we shouldn't be commingling with. We know that they don't mean us any good. Mm -hmm. We know that uh, they're not going to push us forward. We know that um, they're a little sketchy. <laughs> we know that they 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 got a tendency to run out on me yeah. when I need them. Yeah. Um, we, they have a tendency of pulling more from me mm -hmm. than I'm getting from them. Yeah. Um, these are involvements. These are relationships that we have to be mindful of. I said it before and I'll say it again. If you're in a relationship with someone, if you see their life and you don't like it, mm -hmm. chances are you're going to eventually see your life and you ain't going to like that either. Mm -hmm. Because when you see your friends, you'll see your future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Matter of fact, if you show me your lineup of friends, I'll prophesy your future. Yeah. I'll be able to tell you exactly where you're going yeah. because birds of a feather, flock they together. flock together. Uh, our relationship says a lot about who we are. Who we're connected to says a lot about 
uh, where we're going in life. So we got to be mindful of those that we allow in our circle. We have to be mindful of the associations, the relationships. Uh, we can't just allow everybody just pile themselves up on us. Uh, there are a lot of people that may say you're their friend, but that doesn't mean that you have to call them your friend. I'll say that again. There may be a lot of people that may say that you are their friend, but that doesn't mean that you have to call them your friend. Mm -hmm. They may just be an associate, but, you know, some people may say, oh, oh, that's my best friend. I remember I had this one girl. She always would say I was her best friend, and I would be like, okay. In her estimation, that's who I was to her, but I can't say that in exchange. And so we can't be afraid to uh, not allow people that those titles or they feel like they that's what we have to say just because they say it. That's not how that works. Uh, we have to make sure we're monitoring all of our relationships to make sure those relationships are healthy. Amen. Come on, let's give God some praise. Amen. And just because they're your best friend today don't mean they're going to be your best friend tomorrow. Bestest can change. And sometimes your besties must change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Think about it. See, la. Yeah, because sometimes our assignments, they just don't line up. Sometimes our hunger just doesn't match anymore. I, I, I'm, 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 I'm hungry for the things of God. I'm thirsty for his presence. And if you don't have like passion, we don't have anything to relate to anymore and, and, and sometimes we're so committed to people then we are committed to God and we got to be mindful of it because in order to have a true relationship we must relate yeah we must relate there has to be some things in common there has to be some commonality it has to be you know some things that we can do together mm -hmm. think about it think about it scripture clearly tells us how can two walk yeah. together except they agree. agree it has to be some agreement somewhere yeah. agreement in my life agreement with where we're going agreement with what we're doing mm -hmm. so it has to be some relation there yeah. if you're not able to relate it's hard to have a true bona fide relationship, relationship. Mm -hmm. can we talk together can you stimulate my cognitive processes? <laughs> Can we sit down at a dinner table and have an intellectual conversation? Mm -hmm. Can we, can, can, can you, well, I don't want to go too far. <laughs> but in other words, it has to be some commonality there for you to really have that relationship. So that leads me to this next uh, interactive Bible study question, and it is this. What are some must-have relatable things? that you got to have in your relationship? What are some of those relatable things you got to have in your relationship? Some must-haves. Um, I would say the relatable part would be the person would have to have a relationship with God because, like you said, Sunday, like, you can love God, but if you don't have a relationship with God, how would you know how to treat me? Or, yeah. like, you know, what did you say? Like, the person can say they love God, but then they're, they're fighting demons. Mm -hmm. So now you got to handle those demons from their parents, from the grandparents. Yeah, so yeah, 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 yeah. And that's real. That's Come on, let's give God some praise. Yeah, God check out people, late. family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. If daddy was crazy and <laughs> granddaddy crazy and great granddaddy crazy, <laughs> um, might need to check. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, 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 you might need to check. <laughs> and, and, yeah, yeah, she, she, she ready. She ready. <laughs> But some people need to hear this because um, we have to be mindful of who we connect to because not only do we connect with them, we connect with their bloodline. Mm -hmm. We connect with their bloodline, and, and, and there's a connection there, and we just got to be mindful that, that the person that we're connecting to, we're going to be able to build with. We're able to build with, and that goes for singles. Uh, relationships around you mm -hmm. should build you. They yeah. should um, edify you. They should challenge you to become better. Marriages, you should enter uh, into a covenant with someone that's going to help 
that you can build with. You don't want to get in with somebody that you're trying to build with, and every time you build, they tear it down. Mm. Or, or you know, you're trying to set up a budget, and they just want to blow up your budget by mm. spending frivolously. Mm. You know, no, no, no. We we building together. We working together. We're walking together, so we can continue to do ministry and live together. Amen. Amen. Uh, some of the um, relatable things that I feel like I should I need to have in my relationships is we should say we should share the same values yeah. such as integrity and, yeah. uh, family togetherness and just yeah. just things that I value that I believe is important I believe that my friendships should have the same thing and then on a lighthearted note I feel like we shouldn't be able to laugh everything shouldn't be so serious yeah. so I love to laugh. I love to cut up. And I believe that my friends should be able to do the same. Amen. Absolutely. Amen. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. I, relatable things. I have to have friendships that love the Lord. You just got to love the Lord. You have to be. I, all my friends, I like, they got to be praisers. I'm a praiser by nature. <laughs> I, people that's in relationship with me, y'all got to be a praise. Cause, um, we go through, we want to, my might want to just break out and give God some glory. You can't be looking at me like, oh, what are you doing? <laughs> Girl, we gonna pray, <laughs> and then not only am I gonna praise, but I might cut up too. I might just like to have a little fun. Yeah, so all yeah. of those things intertwine. That relatableness. Um, people who are really, really serious, they they don't just don't relate to me because I'm always joking. I'm always playing. I'm serious though. I'm very serious. But we can go from zero but to I Jesus can go real from, quick. I can go from serious <laughs> yeah. to playing in, yeah. in two point yeah, four seconds. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's all right. Yeah. It's okay. And yeah. another relatable thing, y'all got like a dream girl. No, I'm just playing. Just throwing <laughs> in Amen. Amen. And sing all the songs. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah. And um, one thing uh, Minister Martinisha said, uh, she said uh, we should have the same values. Mm -hmm. And that's so key because uh, anytime you're in a relationship with uh, people, you want to find people that have those like-minded values that yeah. you have, those yeah. things that you hold yeah. dear yeah. to your heart. Mm -hmm. Because if you have some values and they don't have any values that uh, they want to live by, uh, Scripture says it like this, evil communication corrupts, corrupts good, manners. good manners. And I don't care how strong you are, they're going to start rubbing off on you. And before you know it, you'll start saying things they say. Mm -hmm. You'll start to do things they say yeah. um, because uh, your, your values have changed. And she even went on as it relates to family. You want to find some people, uh, if, you, if you value family, find those that value family as well. You don't want to hook up with nobody that uh, you want to go to your family reunion and they want to sit home. Or you want to go out together and, 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 and have a night on the town, but they just want to be a homebody. Mm -hmm. No. Find somebody that you can relate to. Mm -hmm. And if you can relate with them, that's going to help bring you the joy that you're looking yeah. for in your relationships. That's good. Amen. You, you almost touched on what I come up here to say, Pastor Josh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> about the families. Yeah. Um, my wife and I, we uh, valued and we a reliable thing with us was to know that we we are not one sided yeah. when it comes to family, yeah, yeah. or friends. Yeah. We we want we, that's something that we decide to say. Well, hey, if we got we got grandchildren, yeah, yeah. and and I once uh, spoke and said that I have a larger family than I had before because when I remarried, yeah. I had more people added into my life. Yeah. Yes. So we we we're not one sided with that. With our, our grandchildren, and our grandchildren on both sides. Yeah. Both of us have some some people in our families that's close, kind of like. I don't, know what you mean. You, you got, it, the full you got load, that crazy uncle. But you know, a few you still with, gotta love them. Yeah. Yeah. You still with gotta treat them like oh, somebody, oh, even me. though they may want to <laughs> cuss us out or call us names. Yeah, yeah. We don't go in that. We don't fall in that category with yeah. them with that, but. Still, we want to treat them how we want to be treated. Amen. Amen. That's, That's good. good. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You got to be able to relate to the family. Um, that's one of the things that I had on my relatables list um, because I know it, uh, as w I was growing up, I would see my mother do things by herself. And I always said that if I was to get married, man, my husband were going to do things together. Mm -hmm. 
and you know we always do things together this is my boo you know yeah. we got yeah, to yeah. be together that's just what we do and so that's one of those relatable things i just needed somebody who was going to be able to do life with me you know not not you at home and everybody every time i come somewhere they where where your husband where your husband where your husband I, that was annoying to me i was annoyed for my mama she might not even been annoyed but it where larry where larry i used to be like mm, he home <laughs> But I wanted my husband with me. Amen, amen. And I'm glad I could be with you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. All right. Now, you just said what I was going to say. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I was going to say that some of the relatable things, and not just with friendships, but relationships, too, that I need people who are going to uh, want to make it through their trauma with me. Because there's a lot of things that we have been through separately that we don't, a lot, a lot of people bring their trauma into their relationships and they continue, and even they don't know that it's trauma, mm-hmm. and they continue to pour that into their relationship. Well, this is how my parents did, so this is how I'm going to do it. And this is, they don't understand the, way, the weight that they're bringing into the relationship. So um, I want people in my life that recognize what they've been through and not try to uh, coddle it, not try to push it down, but actually acknowledge it and want to push through it yes, with me. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Amen. Let's amen. Yeah, push yeah, yeah. Us. yeah. That's push good. Us. Yeah. Yeah. And I believe you're in the right place. Uh, you had the right place at the right time with the right Thanks. doing the right thing with the right people. Um, and we have um, a whole lot of um, lovers of God here uh, at the Forward Christian Center. That's one great thing that I'm grateful for uh, as a pastor. We got some people that genuinely love God. Mm-hmm. They're uh, chasing God. They're uh, trying to serve God with all of their heart mind soul and strength uh and it's always good to uh have relationship with those that you're in community with why because we can be accountable one to another and um and and so i just want to just encourage you uh if you're looking for uh forward to adding other pieces in your life uh, reach out to some of those uh those ones that's here in the Ford christian center because i believe they can add value to your life and push you even more forward amen Amen. Amen. Bless right. God for the community. Yeah. We need each yeah, other. Yeah. Amen. Um, and um, Pastor Charles began to share on Sunday about how uh, Jesus began to say to his disciples, one of you will betray me. And one of the things that stood out to me is um, when he began to share how the disciples, all of them, begin to say, Lord, is it I? You know, and immediately I thought that all of us within us have some form of proclivity to betray Jesus. All of us got some way that we can do wrong in some kind of way. And those disciples were no different than us. They immediately said, is it me? Mm-hmm. You know, when somebody come in the room and say, oh, you said something about me, all of us be like, what What I said? <laughs> who said that? You know? yeah, <laughs> we'll be yeah, looking, yeah. trying to figure out who, who knowing that we could have been the one that said something. Because all of us have something in us that can be negative. Yes. Uh, and all of us have that on the inside of us. And we got to re- be mindful that if we want right relationships, we still got to search within ourselves to make sure that our relationship our, with God is number one first. And then that our hearts are right so that we can be right in right relationship with others. Amen. Come on. Let's give God some praise. Yeah. 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 And. And I began to talk about um, Judas um, and how Jesus was at the Last Supper. And we begin, I began to talk about uh, relational, um, relation, relational um, relationships or transactional relationships. And the Lord uh, took me to this because um, not only did the, uh, the disciples uh, say, Lord, uh, is it me? Uh, we can see where uh, Judas, he began to. Uh, not only not say, Lord, is it me? He began to say, Master. And when I saw that, I saw I saw where uh, his commentary was different than uh, what some of the other disciples said because they acknowledged Jesus as being Lord, but he only acknowledged Jesus as being his master or teacher or rabbi. And the whole thought behind that is that sometimes we can have people in our life, they're not after having a true relationship Mm -hmm. they're only there for the transaction Mm -hmm. they're only there to 
uh, get information from us. They're only there to pull from us. Think about the role of a teacher. The role of a teacher is just to give you information. Yeah. And we have in our churches abroad people that want just more information. They don't want God. They just want information. Yeah. They just want more information. They, they're, they're just looking for um, just, just knowledge, mm -hmm. but they don't want any connection. And Judas was was th he was that guy. He was that guy that he just wanted to acknowledge Jesus as being master. But mm -hmm. God is so much more than a master. Yes. He's such more. He's much more than a teacher. Yes. He's much more than a rabbi. Yes. He's Lord. Yes. He's Lord. Yes. And, and sometimes I'm telling you, people will dumb try to dumb down God to just being a good teacher, mm. or being a prophet, mm. or being a messenger. No, 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 no. Mm. Jesus is God. Yes. God is Jesus. They're yes. one. Yes. Jesus is Lord. Yes, he is. And, and I, I, I want y'all to see that because um, that's what separates Christians from other religions. Yeah. We believe that Jesus is not just a teacher. Mm -hmm. He's not just a ma messenger. He's not just a master. No, no, no. He's our Lord and Savior. Savior. So I just wanted to just reiterate that point to where we have to have those relationships that are not transactional, but yeah. they're relational where we're giving to God and God is giving to us. Amen. Come on. Praise God for that. I don't want any transactions. Transactional relationships are tiring. Uh, transactional relationships can be really heavy mm -hmm. because you'll be doing all the giving and um, never giving any anything back. You can't be transparent. You're always the one who's the secret keeper. Anybody ever been that kind of friend? You're always the secret keeper, but you can never tell them no secrets because you know by tomorrow it's going to be all the way down <laughs> them turn <Turner> road. <laughs> but you're the one they can come and confide in. And those are relationships that you can't be transparent in because I can't give you all of my dirty laundry because you just came in and here with five loads of somebody else's. And so you have to have those relationships that are not just transactional, where you're coming to get me to help you, support you, be that listening ear. But when it come to you, you like, I can't give you nothing because <laughs> it won't, it, it'll be all over town. And so we don't want those kinds of transactions. Amen. 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 And I made the statement where there is no transaction, you can be transparent. Yeah. So in other words, when you are able to have a relationship mm -hmm. and you're able to relate with a person. You don't mind getting naked before them. Yes. You don't mind letting your hair down. Yes. You don't mind them seeing um, your your gray areas. You don't mind, you know, them seeing your stretch marks. You don't mind them seeing, you know, those imperfect places yes. in your life. And, and, I, and, and not only does that relate to us as a believer, it re relates to us in a marriage. Mm -hmm. When you have a spouse that you can relate to, you don't mind, you know, um, getting naked before them. You don't mind being free before them. You don't mind them seeing your stretch marks. You don't mind them seeing your imperfections. Mm -hmm. Why? Because you can be transparent with them. Mm -hmm. And likewise, singles, you should find somebody that you can relate to, someone where you can let your hair down. In other words, you could take your makeup off and still feel beautiful. You're still that chick in the room. Makeup, no makeup. you still that dude, six-pack or a gallon. Yeah, yeah, you're still, you're still that. When you find, I, I, this is so good, I'm telling y'all, I'm taking y'all, tape up, no tape up, haircut, no haircut. You, they B2B, love you. Be the be, no be the be. <laughs> Chicken head, no, no. But, but the thought is, find people that genuinely love you, not your representative. And so many people fall in love with the representative, yeah. the one that show up on the first date yeah. or the one that show up, you know, at, at the at the out. at the first. Yeah. When you're going out. No, 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 no. I want to see you in your joggers. I want to see you, you know, with your with your sure. T-shirt on. I want to see you. Yeah. With your with, 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 yeah. Yeah. All those <laughs> things. Because you want to be able to be transparent. 
Because if you can't be transparent mm -hmm. and you got to hide around them, it's a transactional relationship mm. and not a relational relationship. My Lord. Mm -mm. I got to be able to be free. I got to be myself. Um, that's one thing that's important. You have to be able to be yourself in any relationship. Uh, if it's going to be a bona fide relationship, you have to be able to be who you are. You don't have to speak a certain way. Yeah, uh, they yeah. don't. Y uh, if they're changing everything about you, you can't say this or say that. Like, this is how I talk. You know, this is just me. Uh, you have to be able to be free to be who you are. Free to love, free to serve. They should be able to accept all of who you are. If you if you jump around and praise and shout, that's that's you. You jump around and praise and shout. You know, they can't be like, you need to calm down. No, no, no. If I need to calm down, I need to find somebody else. Yes. I got to find somebody. If somebody tell you, oh, you talk about the Lord too much, I, I got to find another friend. It's not going to work. I'm sorry. It ain't going to work, which is going to lead me to this next thought. Some relationships have necessary endings. There are some relationships that we have to let go of. They're necessary. We have necessary endings that have to take place in our lives. Everybody is not going to go to the end of the journey with us. They're just like Pastor Charles talked about those ga game pieces of chess, those chess pieces. All of those players and pieces are not going to continue with us in the end of the journey. And you got to be good with that. You got to be okay knowing that every relationship is not permanent. Some of them are seasonal. It's all right. That doesn't mean because they left your life that they a devil or a demon. No, they just were necessarily, it just had to end. And we have to be good with those necessary endings. We can't get caught up in people coming and going and we feel like, oh, we so sad and we're disappointed because people are leaving. Could you ever have thought that it was God moving them and it was working for your good? Yeah. Yeah. When we think about it in that point, we already know God is not going to lead us anywhere that he can't take care of us. When he removes, he builds back up. Yeah, come on, let's give God some praise. Yeah, so some relationships have necessary endings, and um, we can see it in Acts 13 and 13. Uh, here at the beginning, we can see where Holy Spirit, <coughs> excuse me, said, separate unto me Barnabas and Paul for the work of the ministry. Also, John Mark joined them mm -hmm. on their assignment. Here in the book of Acts 13 and 13, it says, Paul and his companions then left Paphos by ship to for Pamphylia, landing at the port town of Perga. There, John Mark left them and returned to Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Here in the story, while Paul was on his first missionary uh, journey uh, with Barnabas, uh, John Mark ended up leaving him and going to Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. So in other words, John Mark began to ditch, ditch him. Uh, he walked out on them. Uh, he, he, he ended up uh, cutting their missionary journey short. And uh, here I began to paint the picture how sometimes we have people in our lives that, uh, that have been walking with us, but all of a sudden their assignment ended. Mm -hmm. And we're wondering why it stopped. But that's when we have to be okay with people leaving our life. Yeah. And so many of us, we are relationship hoarders where we always have to have people around us to where we miss where God is really severing certain relationships or severing certain seasons. But this is where we can see clearly in scripture that sometimes people have to leave your life. Sometimes people have to sell you out. Sometimes people have to turn their back on you. It's just part of the mission that you're on. But at the end of the day, you just have to be okay with whatever hand God gives you yeah. and continue to play that hand to win in spite what happens along the way. Yeah. So in other words, be encouraged to understand that every relationship won't last. And if God allows those relationships to end and he's okay with it, you should be okay with it too. Yeah. Amen. Come on, praise God. So we'll go into our final uh, interactive Bible study and question. And we'll get ready to close. And we'll close after this. Um, it, uh, the question is, have you ever experienced a necessary ending? 
anybody ever experienced an uh, ending that you knew was necessary and you absolutely knew that it was God severing that thing and that you wouldn't be able to go forward with it if you tried because God was in the midst of it? Jump on in, yeah. Um, I just had to end like a 26-year relationship spiritually because even on the journey as we grew. Get a little closer to the mic. Even as the journey as we grew, that person stopped growing in the ministry that they were in, but you're always saying what's not right in that ministry or, but why are you being so negative and you have all this knowledge and mm -hmm. I would never question anyone's spirituality, you know, Christianity, but we can talk on the phone for hours we can go eat, mm -hmm. eat crabs, mm -hmm. but moving forward yes. in the things of the kingdom. Yes, yes. And if your relationships are not, you're not doing what God has purposed you to do, yes. it calls for a necessary ending. Yes, and yes, it does. Yes. I don't care how you love them. You can you can go on trips but if they are not putting their hands to the plow come on come on come on that's real and doing what god has purpose for them to do yeah while he on this earth yeah. it's time to end that relationship amen yes. amen. That's good. amen that's good yeah that's good 26 that's good. years she yeah, had to yeah. cut it off yeah. wow yes i had to end uh a relationship with a friend from like 40 years wow. we were friends from the time I was like 10 she even called me sister <laughs> but just in my spirit when you start moving different and because um, I don't like to be treated any kind of way mm -hmm. so once I sense that um, I don't I can't come back from it because you don't show consistency you do one thing, and then you say another. See, that don't run with me. I give you a couple times to say something and do something else, and then I just look at the whole picture, and I'm just like, no, you don't have my best interest, but you call me sister. Yeah. How can you call me sister and you move the way that you move? So I literally, like I said, I just, and she actually texted me the other day, and it's like, it's so crazy because I didn't even return the text because that's just how over, um, you know, I am. And so then you call me and I didn't even miss your call on purpose. It's like when I looked at my phone, I was like, oh, she called me. And I still didn't call back. I text you from the text from the other day because at this point, I can't operate. You're, you, you, you're causing me to operate the way that I'm not. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, not yes. responding, not, yes. I don't do people like that, that yes. I love, that yes. I care about. Yes. I, you know, we have a relationship, so we're going to go back and forth. So after 40 years, I'm over it. Yeah. She may not know it, but at the end of the day, I'm done. Yeah. 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 Necessary. Yeah. Necessary. Good. 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 Um, I had to experience a necessary ending. Um, it hurt it, but at the same time, I realized it was taking too much of my time. And I figured that God has a funny way of getting you drawn back in um, to um, him when you're distracted. So it was necessary, and I am plugged back in the things of God, and I am doing good. Amen, <laughs> amen, amen, good. amen. Yeah, I, I love that. I think one of the key things she said was that uh, she got rid of the distractions and she was able to plug back into the things of God. Yeah. I'm so sorry, y'all. Okay, so as soon as you guys, I think that was the second time I came here, you were doing ships, mm -hmm. right? And I'm telling y'all, I went home and I had to, to end a relationship that day. Wow. Because uh, you were talking about the different types of relationships and the fact that a relationship has to... Uh, protects you, has to fight for you and fight with yes, you. That relationship yes. has to uh, love you for you. That yes. relationship has to do all these things. And I'm sitting here like, I've been in this relationship for 10 years and why why don't I feel this way? Why mm -hmm. am I cons consistently going through problems and issues with you? Why is it always so hard and not easy? Yeah. So I had to 
it's, it's the comfort of the relationship. It's the fact that it's been 10 years. It's the fact that I thought that I wanted to see your life grow. I wanted to see you. I wanted to be friends with you forever. Yeah. But yeah. it wasn't enough anymore. I wanted I wanted to be enough for so yeah. much, but it wasn't enough anymore. Wow. And I had to let that relationship go. And it was hard for me. It took, I procrastinated. I was like, listen, I just stopped texting them like she did. I just stopped answering calls. But now I was like, no, this can't work yeah. anymore. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, yeah. That. Amen. Amen. That's, That's good. 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 Necessary endings. And when we make those necessary endings, we have to be able to trust God to repair our hearts because anytime there is a separation from someone that we want to love, there's going to be some repair that has to take place. But ultimately, God will restore everything that has been broken, everything that we feel like we've lost. Because it's not a loss when God causes us to separate. He's going to provide everything that we felt like we're needing. He's going to be that source. Amen, amen, amen. I just wanted to know if anybody else noticed Lady Jennifer don't play by the crab. Because she said that like two or three times. Like, we can go <laughs> eat crabs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 so, yeah, that's good, uh, Acts 15 and 36, and we'll close with this, after some time, Paul said to Barnabas, let's go back and visit each city where we previously preached the word of God, to see how the new believers are doing, Barnabas agreed and wanted to take along John Mark. But Paul disagreed strongly since John Mark had deserted them in Pamphylia and had not continued with them in their work. Their disagreement was so sharp that they separated. Barnabas took John Mark with him and sailed for Cyprus. Paul chose Silas, and as he left, the believers entrusted him to the Lord's gracious care. I love this because this lets me know that relationships can change. And even though relationships started with Holy Spirit, they can end with Holy Spirit. And we can clearly see it in scripture where they begin to change dancing partners, change uh, peep ministry partners. Uh, Barnabas chose John Mark, went on to do the work of the Lord. Paul then chose Silas. And, and, and this is why I made the statement, your bestie might change. Just because y'all are rolling right now, y'all might change. Paul ended up choosing Silas. And one of the things we also see clearly in Scripture, we never hear anything else more about Barnabas. But we do about Paul. Why? Because Paul was the one God wanted to bring light to, bring attention to. So even though you may lose some people in your life, be okay with it. Because they can't stop the assignment that God has called you to. Amen. Come on, let's give them some praise. That's all we have for you tonight. We just want you to know that friend or no friend, you got to do the will of the Lord. Uh, no matter who's going to roll with you, no matter who's... Uh, on the assignment or on the journey with you, you still got to do God's will, regardless of if anybody will walk with you. People change all the time. Uh, loved ones, they walk away. Yeah. Everybody, you just got to know that God's going to provide. Yeah. God's going to meet the need. God is going to take care of everything that has to do with your life. It doesn't matter who walks out of your life. Just know God got you in his hand. Yeah. He's going to take care of everything that has to do with your life. Yeah. So don't mourn another day about a loss that God decided for you to have because when he separates you he's going to provide something 10 times better amen come on amen. let's give God some praise amen yeah let us pray father God we thank you Lord God for your word that have given insight your word that have inspired and even your word that have uh, given us what we need Lord God to make decisions in our life father God we thank you for your word accomplishing that which it was sent to do help us to begin to recalibrate our relationships help us to begin to evaluate those that we have a connection with those that we are involved with and even those that we associate with so that we can continue to have or continue to be what you have called us to be and continue to do what you have called us to do 
Lord God, some of us that may, may need to make serious decisions, Lord God, help us to make those decisions and move with you, heeding what you're saying and doing what you're saying, despite what we may feel, despite, hallelujah, how things may look, Father God, we just want to simply be in your will. And Father God, I thank you, Lord God, for your word, hallelujah, strengthening us, strengthening our faith, and your word also giving light to Hallelujah, some things that we may need to change in our life. And Father God, we just say thank you, and we give you the praise, honor, and glory. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Come on, let's give God Amen. some praise.